What's up YouTube? It's another episode of the How To Guy and today we're looking at some interesting stuff. We're looking at ND filters specifically for your Sony Alpha cameras. Today I'm going to use the Sony A6400 to do this and I'm going to explain to you the difference between fixed ND filters and what you can do with them and variable ND filters. Look how cool this thing is. It blocks out sun. Do you see me through the hole? ND filters are like sunglasses for your lens. They're kind of important, they're kind of a big deal, and you can do some interesting stuff, including get your cinematic shooting right, get the correct exposure. You can also do long exposure photography using ND filters. So let's get started right now. If you want to do long exposure during the daylight hours, you're going to get a really overexposed image if you don't actually use an ND filter. The second issue that if you just do a normal time lapse without an ND filter is that you actually won't get motion blur in your image. Have a look at this particular image over here. If we freeze this image, notice one thing. There's no motion blur. It still looks like a time lapse. Let's put another example up. Have a look. Notice that when we freeze it, we actually see some motion blur in the image. But as you can see, this camera has no ND filter attached. All you need to do is screw it on the front. See, in order to maintain the 180 degree shutter rule, you need to have your shutter speed double that of your frame rate. So if you're shooting in 24 frames per second, your shutter speed should be like 1 over 50 or closest to that. But anytime you try to go outside, you'll get an overexposed image. That's when you use an ND filter, which means your shutter speed can be kept at around 1 over 50 and still shoot at 24 frames per second. Why would you want to do that? Because that gives you the most cinematic, natural way the human eye sees video. So right now it's like 11 o'clock, which is the worst possible time to film a YouTube video. I've got a variable ND filter on this camera and it's actually doing a pretty good job. I probably don't have the best exposure right now. This isn't the best camera lens, but using this ND filter, I'm able to kill a lot of the light coming into the sensor. So let's say you have your camera set up and you set it to manual shooting mode and you see a beautiful landscape in front of you and you want to get some detail out of those clouds. Well, let's have a look at an example. So let me put the variable ND filter and let's notice what happens to those clouds. I get some good detail in those clouds. Not perfect, but not bad. So if we actually use this ND filter at this point, watch what happens. This technically looks a lot better at the moment. It looks like my histogram values are a lot better. You should be able to see some clouds in the background and this also means that i'm obeying the 180 degree shutter rule which tries to keep your shutter speed double that of your frame rate interesting stuff as i said in the intro this is the hoyer pro nd1000 this stops 10 stops of light this is the kind of filter you want to use if you're doing long exposure photography let's say you're at the ocean that's when you want to get those shots where the water looks really super silky smooth and you want to expose your image for like six or eight seconds all you need to do is unscrew this old variable ND filter and screw on the big ND1000 and now you're actually ready to do long exposure photography. Go to the ocean and get some cool shots. These ND filters also allow you to do long exposure time lapse photography which is really interesting. You can go out at night and you can decrease the amount of light coming into your camera meaning you can do time lapses that look really super awesome where you've got those different colors that flow across the screen and there is a little bit of trial and error involved with this you should to try and figure out the right balance do a few test photography shots before you actually do a time lapse at the end of the day it depends what effect you're looking for if you do want to do a photo that just has static movement and still looks like a time lapse that's fine but it's usually better to have a little bit of motion blur in your image especially when it's like five or six o'clock and it might be getting darker and you've got that really great light running across your scene. But in the end, it's a good learning curve for you. It actually helps you understand photography, how aperture and light work, how they enter your senses and what you can do to actually get some cool effects. Those are the kinds of things you can sell on stock photography websites. And remember, as in all things in life, if you actually go out and buy a variable ND filter, I suggest you get a better one. They can go up in price, but you do pay for what you get. There's different layers of glass actually in these things, and if you get a cheap make, the one like I've got, it might change the color temperature of your image and your video, which is not the ideal thing to have when you're doing photography. More save up your money, spend a little bit more, and get a decent one, unlike me who went the cheap route. Guys, if you found anything in this video useful, please hit the subscribe button, maybe leave a comment or a like. It really helps my little channel, and see you again next time.